Overall, I'm really pleased with uh, the work in your exercise books, but there are a few developments that you can do. First thing is you need to make sure that you have got your glossary with all your keywords in it. You also need to make sure that you have done your homework, and a number of you really need to develop your homework. You need to add more examples, uh, possibly a little bit more explanation of specific detail. Um, you should have information about the demographic transition model and some answers there and hopefully a little bit of peer marking so it would be good um, if you can see here needs to include a bit of figures to make it a little bit better so I'd like to do that. You'll see where you need to improve because there are little yellow markers and that means that there's an area that you need to develop. Um, something that quite a lot of you have missed out on is you have talked about the implications of a youthful population but you also need to talk about the implications of an ageing population. It's something that I don't think many people got to do. Um, Making sure that you've done your homework on population, uh, the demographic transition model, and what people need to do to develop that is to include more explanation. Why is the country at that stage? Why is the birth rate and the death rate like they are? And also include figures. That would make it better. So here we can see the, the impacts of the young population. We just need to do the ageing population down here. Um, then you should have some information about different countries, so Japan, Mexico, make sure you've got that, and you should have your, which most people have done, your information about population policies around the world. That's really important, you've got a good bit of detail on that, so you might want to look back at the textbook because that often comes up in the exam. Your homework on population policies. Um, generally people had some good ideas, but to really make it better and to develop it, you want to link it to specific countries. You might say, oh, I would have a one-child policy like in China or I do what they did in Estonia, you're probably going to combine it. Don't think you just have to copy it. Try and bring in a few different points. You should have information on China and if you've not got information about the China's one-child policy, you need to develop that and you'll find information about that in the textbook. Then we, when we go over to migration, you should have some opinions on whether you think it's good or bad. Try to have a balanced argument. That will make for a better answer in the exam. What are the good things and the bad things about migration? So make sure you've got a list of those. Make sure you've got your push and pull factors. You want a range of factors for that. Um, then we come on to migration policies. And I think a lot of you need to look over this because based on the exam, people are confusing migration policies with population policies. So have a look over that. And you should really have two case studies, one for the UK and one for the USA, and a lot of people didn't get that far with the USA one, so they probably need to develop that too. So make sure you know exactly what they do, the reasons for their policies, and try and relate that back to the good and the bad things about migration in general. You'll then see that you've got your mark sheet here, you've got some targets, you may want to set your own targets based on your exam paper, and I'll do a separate video on that. If you've got a sticker, it means I was really pleased. I would like all of you though, please, to um, fill in this first bit here with your target grade, the topic, which was population dynamics and something that you are pleased with, and then also give your comment on effort and homework. Any corrections that you do should be done in green pen, and that's really important. Um, I'd also like you to make sure that all your loose sheets